All right, I uh, mentioned earlier the idea of Leonard Fournette as MVP. Sean, you mentioned looking at Travis Kelsey and his upside for MVP. Talk about that bet and any other MVP uh, MVP bets you are making. No, just just Kelsey at fifteen to one. You can still get it. Um, and when it comes to Kelsey, you're just betting on his ceiling here. Um, looking at the past 20 years, um, where, where they've been voting this particular style, or 80% of it comes from the media, 20% from fans. Um, you know, QB wins 60% of the time, wide receiver, I'm going to say wide receiver slash tight end 20% of the time and, uh, defensive players 20% of the time. I think it's, it's pretty clear with a 56 and a half total, uh, we can lower down the chances of a defensive player winning it. So I have that closer to five to 10%. I, I think the winner will be either quarterback or wide receiver tight end here. Um, and with Kelsey, you know, he's going to be the first tight end to win it if he does. And you already mentioned it, he broke the record for receiving yards for a tight end this year. He was second in the league in receiving yards. So if, if you go back and look at, um, you know, all the games this year and assign, if you were to award an MVP um, for every game, I, I pegged Kelsey getting the MVP two to four games this year. Um, there were some games where, you know, he dominated such a huge amount of the target share um, that, you know, if you look at week 13 conference championship week 11, week 14, I think he would have won it. Um, so I think his true odds of winning here is closer to, you know, nine to one, 10 to one odds. So I think we're getting some good value here, but like you guys have mentioned, I think just when it comes to these big time games, his ceiling is going to be a much, much higher in a matchup like this. Yeah, that's interesting. And you can get uh, Kelsey, MVP 15 to one out there. Uh, so something to, to keep an eye on it. And Sean, the, the, you know, theoretical MVPs that he would have won in these games. I think all of them that you mentioned came in the second half of the season. Uh, and so it's, you know, with the volume that he's getting, he really might even have better MVP odds than, uh, than most people would kind of be projecting uh, if they're thinking about the entire season. So something to keep in mind there, Rayvon MVP, uh, any thoughts that you have here? Tom Brady, uh, he's plus 210. I love, I love Brady here because if you're, you know, I mean, and you could kind of use these as a proxy to, to, you know, depending on which team you like, you know, the, the quarterback odds are, um, you know, better than you're going to get for the money lines uh, on both sides. I think there's a high percentage chance kind of going along, along with what Sean said about, you know, this is a high total game. Uh, I think that really like defensive players are completely off limits for me. And that's, that's different from last year when it was, you know, I think it was 51, but uh, I think I had some shares in like Fred Warner and, and guys like that, you know, San Francisco is a defensive team. And this one, I, I just think that if, if the bucks win, particularly, I think there's almost no way they don't give it to Brady. I don't, I, I think there's almost no way he doesn't have like a huge hand um, in, in the victory. And, you know, this you know could be his last Super Bowl. He didn't win it in his last Super Bowl that he won, Edelman won it, actually had him as a long shot play. But I, I think that um, there's just an overwhelmingly high chance that, especially with the Bucks makeup where you have Godwin and Evans and probably Brown and Bray and, and Gronk. And like, there's just a lot of guys that spre he's spreading it around to that. Even if he doesn't have like a huge game, like let's say he actually just hits his player props of like, what are they like 290 yards and gets like three touchdowns and they, and they win the game. I think Brady still gets the award. So I, he stands out to me at, at plus 210, uh, especially um, uh, over a lot of the other like long shot guys. Uh, I think this is Brady versus Mahomes. I think you're right. I think it is the likeliest outcome that it is. And you see that in the market, the likeliest outcome that it's either Mahomes or Brady. The one argument I would make for Fournette uh, is that in theory, if we see that that Buccaneers defensive line really give problems to an offensive line in uh, in the Chiefs that is pretty injured right now, missing both of its starting tackles, missing its starting left guard, uh, and now I believe the starting center, although I might be wrong, maybe it's just the backup center. But one, one of the centers on the team is also now on the COVID reserve list, will probably be ready to play for the Super Bowl, but is certainly missing practice. Like this is not the offensive line that the Chiefs had last year or that they've had for most of this year. I know that Andy Reid is a wizard and he has two weeks to put this offensive line together and create a game plan to try to compensate for the weakness of his offensive line against the strength of the Buccaneers defensive line. But I'm imagining that 
if we see a scenario where that Buccaneers defense is actually able to put some pressure on Mahomes, get some sacks. Remember, he's not as mobile as he normally is because of the toe injury. Uh, and then the Buccaneers run the ball. And, you know, that that situation of Leonard Fournette actually being able to produce against a, a Chiefs run defense that isn't very good. That's the one scenario where I think Leonard Fournette maybe wins over Tom Brady. I still don't think it's all that likely of a scenario. So I, I'm, I'm with you that it's likelier than not that Brady wins. But I think if there is someone on the Bucks who wins the award, who's not Brady, uh, I think that it is probably Leonard Fournette and you can get him 30 to one. So I, I don't feel horrible about betting on that scenario with that number.